Hey everyone, Larry Bailey here, Awesome Technologies Inc. It is four o'clock on February 20th, 2024. It's a Tuesday. We get together as a community every Tuesday, four o'clock. Thanks everybody for showing up. Um, I am super pumped to uh, have a great discussion today about personas and roles. And we'll talk about multiple persona syndrome, which is something that um, honestly is, is uh, fairly rampant in uh and encompasses across the universe um so if you feel like you're the only one you're not so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about the realities versus you know the ideals um kind of a thing talk about personas i also want to talk about texas <laughs> so for those that lend in texas uh first mortgages in particular i want to talk to you um feel free uh is it an encompass brian asks is it, is it multiple encompass Encompass. No, it's just encompass. It's like, it's like, um, deer, right? Deer is just deer. Is it one deer? Is it 20 deer? I don't know. Anyway, uh, if you're lending Texas, I just got the craziest situation handed to me today. Um, we're helping a client leave encompass and move over to bite. And so one of the things that we've got to deal with is uh seller paid title and I heard the craziest stuff about Texas, and I don't know if this is right, but the client was like, well, every, every attorney does it this way. And so I want to talk to you about that. Um, we've got a couple other things happening in the community. Um, as a reminder, um, for those that are in the admins mastering encompass, we're going to be posting up that final exam uh, this week. I'm going through the questions one more time because I am so, um, nervous about making sure that I give you the best possible chance to get that certificate of completion, become a master of Encompass. Um, we're opening up that to users uh, also. So admins and users mastering Encompass, that's out there and it's extraordinarily affordable um, from my perspective for the training, especially because it goes out, it can go out to everyone in the whole company for one really, really, really low price. Um, so if that's interesting to you or your company because you want to actually train this year, especially with all the changes that are happening. Um, last week, I posted out the walkthroughs part one and part two for 24.1 desktop. And I also posted out the walkthrough for the 24.1 uh, web version. Guys, it's going to get busier, a lot busier. So as a reminder, test environments getting updated on March 9th, uh, production environments getting updated April 6th. Uh, please stay on top of this stuff. Like, there's admin stuff, there's admin tool stuff changing, there's personas changing, there's uh, new settings in uh, loan templates, there's new settings in loan setup. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to see that stuff yet, please go see it or listen to it. I put it on podcast also in case you're the kind of person who just wants to hear me uh, walk through this stuff. Um, if you have any questions, I'll talk about it as a community. Uh, An uh, Angela says, whoa, really moving from Encompass to Byte. Yeah. So what they're doing, they're a smaller shop. And honestly, Encompass is remarkably expensive um, for a smaller shop. So um, crazy enough, uh, Byte actually has similar but very different customizations as compared to Encompass. Most other platforms that speak to like 10 or less users as a company don't let you customize jack crap. Um, so it's kind of sad. So yeah, Byte actually lets you do it, but it's, it's a process. It's, it's a whole different syntax, a uh, whole different language. Anyway, uh, for those that just joined, I set the agenda up today to talk about personas versus roles or personas and roles, best practices. We're going to talk about multiple persona syndrome. Before I do that, though, first things first, does anybody have any questions? Luba, are you on? Yeah, <laughs> you want to come up and ask the question or do you want to chat? What do you want to do, Luba? Dealer's choice. Chat? Okay, that's fine. So for those that don't know, Lou, we had a question in the community. Um, I don't know, was it over the weekend or Friday or yesterday? But, uh, you know, problem with DU, right? Services, right? So you get somebody who is allowed to run services, but then when they go to the services panel, they type in their own friggin' key, their own friggin' password and, and username, and it wipes out the services password management. Um, and then it fails. And then they call you and then you have to remove them from SPM, save, add them back, save, and then have them restart Encompass and then tell them never do that again or else you're no longer their friend. But then they do it again anyway. 
Um, so what I suggested to Luba was to get a, get over and check out the Encompass Partner Connect version of Desktop Underwriter. And um, I said, come to the thing today and ask any questions. So here you are, Luba. So go ahead and type up your questions. That's the, uh, the setup. So certainly, um, is anybody else using Encompass Partner Connect for DU? It's not available on DO yet. I believe LPA is there, although I don't have anybody personally using it. Um, uh, Lisa, use DU through EPC? Uh, just to be clear, that's the question. Awesome. Um, so Luba, connect with Lisa. Um, Lisa, is there anything special that you would want to share with the group in terms of setup? Obviously, uh, we need to go into desktop um, and, or you can go to encompass.ice.com, but get over into admin settings, get into services management, um, that kind of a thing. Um, Lisa says, we're not ready. We're brand new to Encompass. Uh, so you, you probably didn't even use services password management, did you? You went right to EPC, Lisa. Uh, Patty says, uh, oh, good for you, Lisa. You ducked a bullet. Nice job. Um, Patty adds, using uh, EPC for data verify, Equifax, uh, setting up FHA connection, not to you yet. Yeah, Patty, if you're already into EPC that deep with data verify and the other stuff, check it out because it, it relieves a lot of the pressure of um, user credentials. Uh, and again, anything that's in EPC on, on web settings actually transfers to desktop seamlessly. Um, and the, the interface is different too. You no longer get the old school um, services management um, uh, eight, you know, uh, interface. It's a brand new interface. Uh, Optimal Blue is available soon. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of new. Listen, by the end of 24, the goal is to get as many people that are actually doing a significant amount of business over on EPC. So, you know, just as a reminder, the four things I've been saying now for, I don't know, a year is number one, um, get your vendors to Encompass Partner Connect. Number two is to get uh, on enhanced conditions. Number three is to understand how to better leverage workflow engine. And then the fourth one is to really start seriously considering um, using the uh, task-based workflows or workflow tasks on the web. You can use workflow tasks in desktop, but the UI user interface is just not um, as designed. You get your options for that um, on the web. So uh, let's see, Andrew says, Luba. How are the users changing the password? We've used this issue, but they actually started using it with PWM and it stopped password manager. Um, yeah, so what happens is, Angie, they go into the submit for DU and then there they change their credentials there when they go to order. It's a, it's a real crazy situation. There's one of my cats. Um, I know, cat, watch the cat. So. Definitely check into that more. Um, this is going to be a big topic for those that are going to the ICE experience. Um, uh, Angie, sounds like you might have something a little bit different than what we're probably talking about. Um, but yeah, users can actually manually change their password in that um, if it's not automatic um, on, on the services password management setting. EPC, different story. Um, uh, Craig says, Craig asks, Craig asks, do we need new credentials to switch to EPC? The answer, Craig, is no, but you do need to let um, your vendor know that you want to use EPC. They have to enable it for your instance so they know the calls are coming in correctly. Um, Reed adds, uh, most of our users just don't know how to do that since we, because <laughs> Reed, because you have people who are, are nice to, your, to you. Um, in any event, um, so uh, listen, we're going to go on and talk about our topic. Certainly keep the chats coming. I'm going to read them out. If anybody wants to come up on virtual stage and talk it through, feel free. Um, so if you're watching this on replay or some other place else, get over to mortgage.community and, uh, and get in there and check out the full thing. So, um, and we'll see where it goes. So... I'm going to start talking about personas. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk about realities, right? So let's get that over there and let's get this over here and share the big screen, entire screen over here. Cool. 
<clears throat> we all have personas in Encompass. All have them. Now, some Encompasses have different levels of the amount of personas, right? So if we if we look at this one on screen over there, that persona um, has, you know, whatever that is, 12 or so. Um, if we come over into this Encompass, now this is a test environment, so that's why it kind of looks like it's out of the box. If I give you a, uh, a persona, in, uh, excuse me, an environment over here, you look at all these personas. Now you can tell this environment has TPO because there's TPO personas down there. Um, but the idea here is that um, obviously a persona represents job function. It's up there in black and white, like you can't miss it. Um, but how many times does that really make sense? So the way that I, I deal with this idea of, you know, does, uh, are we are we dealing with this properly? I simply go down to system administration, go to all user information, and I go over and um, and we come over and we look at this, right? Uh, so I can grab this properly, right? So just do this. Go in your own system and uh, do this. You can sort that way. This is what I usually do. So anytime I do a workflow review. Um, or, or excuse me, a settings review for Encompass, like an Encompass health check. One of the first things I get to um, in terms of personas is I come down to all user information and do this little guy. Um, so who wants to tell me what the problem is with, with that? I'm gonna just reshare a, a different way. Um, guys, hang with me one second. So who wants to tell me in chat, who wants to tell me what the problem is with having um, you know, all those personas, you know, do you really have a problem? And my general answer is, no, you don't have a problem. You have a maintenance issue on your hands, but you don't really have a problem from, um, from my perspective. Lisa adds, she's a brand new user, like too many places to update things. Now, so here's the deal. I'm going to come back to sharing the screen for a second now that I can I can see the chat over here. I, I hid the chat like a dope. So I'm going to go back to sharing the screen here in a second. Um, and the the idea is, if you've got these different job functions spelled out, and you need these different names created so that you can give Johnny the processor and Jane the assistant and Bobby the underwriter, etc. Remember, these are just names. If I could roll the clock back 16, 18 years ago, I would have told um, uh, Sig at the time, Sig Anderman, like, dude, don't call these things people's titles because it's going to screw people up like forever. These are just numbers. These are just letters. Um, now, you might define what this loan officer persona job function is allowed to do. So this is where people get lost. Um, I've had people give, I've had clients um, and encompasses I've, I've reviewed where they've given somebody a loan assistant, a loan officer, a branch manager, and a loan opener persona because that's what they do. And right away, it's, it's a red flag. And so on chat, it's already been called out. Candace has got persona clashing. Luba's got rules can contradict each other. We're going to talk about that. And so, yeah, like Lisa adds, what's the difference between a funder and a closer? And my answer is, whatever you want it to be. So if, if, if persona A is allowed to do whatever it is that you put and a user needs to do something more or less than persona A, then they shouldn't be given persona A. So again, I'm telling you right now, it, there has never been an encompass anywhere in the last 16 plus years that I've gone into and looked at the all user information and seen a clean slate. Now there's been a lot of folks that have been really good with loan processors uh, in particular. Underwriters is another one that's fairly straightforward. Loan officers too, it's fairly straightforward. Where it gets dicey is like an assistant or an underwriter too, or a manager. These are nonsense. Um, now, if you need someone to have, you know, all the in-betweens, Candace, better way to say it than me. So all the in-betweens, but what I really want you to make sure you're doing is if you, if you don't already know how to do this, please go down into the settings reports and please create a report. Sorry, gang. Please create a report um, over here and use the persona. Has anybody done this, by the way? Has anybody? Well, I'm showing this on screen. Has any, anybody used this? 
Luba, yes. Candice, yep. Cool. Um, if you have never used this, it's uh, it's a great way for you to figure out who has what. So um, what I always recommend is um, anytime I've got a multiple persona syndrome, there's a project you can do that can last you a pretty long time. Um, and the project is consolidate those multiple personas used by one user account into one brand new persona. And I'm, I promise you it's a worthwhile effort because by doing this, you not only force the business to decide what the job function is for, for this persona that they're going to assign, but it also allows you to redefine your personas in a meaningful way as compared to your job titles. And what this does, it allows you to help your, your human resource team and your hiring team, et cetera. So if they want to hire somebody brand new or they want to bring somebody else in the same job title, you already know what persona they need. Now, if they come out, if the company says, no, 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 I need you to have, I need you to be able to do what Larry does and Patty. All right, well, what's the job function of that? Why, why, is, why is this new hire doing more than what these other two job functions are, but they have the same job title. And as an admin, um, you know, the largest company, um, private mortgage company I ever worked for was AFR, like 500, 600 people. It's a huge company at the time. And we went through this project. I pulled uh, the company from data track into Encompass, five different channels, all running simultaneously. And you got to keep it organized. So that's kind of my, my, uh, my path for you as a group is to make sure that you do this kind of an uh, this this kind of a project to run your persona report and figure out who has what, and it lines up in a really nice uh, Excel output where it lets you know, you know, you can filter by the columns so you can see where the commonalities are and where the distinctors are, so you can figure out which which personas are actually most similar, and who, and others that aren't. Now, what I don't want you to do is to fall in the trap of thinking you can create a base persona um, and then add to it for all the other um, all the other intricacies. Do not do that. That is a really, really, really bad idea for all the same reasons that have already been listed in chat. If I give everybody a base persona, that means I can never write a rule to that base persona, and that's absolutely the wrong wrong method. Do not fall into that trap. It seems like a good place. It's danger. Stay away. All right. So that's personas. And, and you know, hopefully everybody's going to take away the, the idea um, of here. So Candace asks, or excuse me, Candace states, Ellie May recommends more than 30. No more than 30. <laughs> all right. First of all, it's such an arbitrary number. Why not 29? Why not 33? Um, so um, listen, this is the same kind of stuff that I hear from ICE mortgage technology even today. They pick things to set a standard, like you can't say infinite and you don't want to say 10. So somebody just made up the word or made up the number 30. Um, the correct answer is 29, like little bit. No, the correct answer is whatever fits your needs as your business. And this gets back into what's your job function. Now, I've, I've worked in companies where literally I go in and they're like, and I'm like, well, who's doing this? And they're like, well, everybody has to do everything because everybody's kind of doing everything, except for Johnny, who's the secondary person. Like, he's got his thing. Um, but the idea is you only need as many personas as you have distinct job functions. That's it. Period. Um, it's the best way to roll. Um Brian, I don't know what 12 with three add-ons means. Um, so what I also on that topic, what I don't want you to do is um, break a user account to add a, uh, a, a persona feature. So I'll give you a good example is you need, the clo you need the closer to be able to not pull a closing package if there's a Maven fail, except for Larry the closer. Larry the closer is totally fine. So rather than create a Larry Closer persona, which is identical to the closer, but the Larry Closer persona is allowed to, to uh, clear packages with a Maven fail, what people will do is go break, they'll call breaking the user account. They'll break the user account 
Um, and what that means in plain language is they'll go into the user account, check the top, check the box on the top right. <clears throat> and you go in, you get to these tabs and you can go make Larry's account be whatever Larry needs. The problem with that is there's no reporting. So if you go back to your, your settings reports, it's not going to show up. And so if things start acting funky or if Larry's doing stuff that Larry really shouldn't be able to do based upon his persona, people are going to get confused and, um, you know, it, it's a, it's traditionally a problem. So that's, that's my, uh, that's my, my ending statement on, on personas. If you guys have any questions, obviously throw it in chat. I'm watching that as I'm talking, I want to move on to roles here. And so a role, I think, is, again, one of the more misunderstood settings of Encompass. So I want to talk about it. And um, uh, first things first, who has roles in their role list that never have a name in the loan file? Like never. Um, I can think of one, Lockdesk. I can think of another, accounting or manager, branch manager, right? Like these are all names that are in here, production manager. I'm not putting somebody's name in a, as a production manager in a loan file. Accounting, right, right, Candace, you have accounting. We all have them. Auditor, another one. Um, possibly, I don't know. I can see maybe auditor if you're like have an active auditor. Uh, compliance, never, right? You're never gonna see a compliance person's name in there. Here's why, here's why I'm bringing this up is because the reason why roles were created was to um, do a couple of things. One was to give another way for um, somebody to see a loan file if they didn't natively have access to it through a user group. So, you know, we know with user groups, you define the, the loans that somebody can see based upon the team members creation. We know organization slash users has a native hierarchy of how you can see loans. But one of the things that you can leverage with roles is I can um, I give you access to a loan file by putting you in as a named contact inside of a loan file um, when I want you to, right? So a good example of this is underwriting, um, processing, these kinds of things. If I put your name in a file and Compass shows it to you, it's pretty wild, as long as you have access to the loan folder. So provided you have access to the loan folder and you don't normally have any other way to see the file, as soon as your name goes in there as a role, bang, and Compass says, oh, you should probably see it. How many people have user groups in their roles? And so a user group, what's really nice about a user group in your role is you get to pick certain people that you want to have in the role list view. A um, good example of this might be for an exception, Candace, Reed, Luba, why do you have uh, a user group in there? And, and Kayla, you're gonna have to tell me more about why you use doc prep role as a user group unless that user group has no members. Um, a queue. So Candace, you build, you use the user group as a queue to assign it to a queue. Um, oh, oh, you built a, you built a queue user group and you do it that way. Totally fine, totally fine. Um, I was looking more for like groups of cross persona based people. So a good example would be like an exception committee or a uh, second tier review, which is the same thing as exception, or it could be for whatever else. But what you can do is you can create a role in, a, in, a, in, in here and use a user group. And what's really nice is with the user groups, you can create the user group, whatever you want with whomever you want, so that if you pick that user group to go into that role inside of a loan file, everybody in that user group, bang, sees the loan. Um, so that's a really clever way. I, I don't find a lot of companies leverage user groups. Using it for a queue basis, perfectly fine. Um, Kayla, when you say yes for the doc prep role, do you mean you added, you created a, a, a protect doc user group? All right, so here we go. The underrated persona uh, and the underrated user queue is assigned to protect doc so they can, um, so they can protect docs and no other users can edit or delete them. Um, so as long as everything's working okay, I guess, fine. Um, totally fine. I typically don't ever recommend that ever um, unless you're only assigning the underwriter to the documents to protect it. Typically protect doc role. Um, again, this is role access to documents. 
Um, and so typically what I recommend is creating, um, you know, a role that literally says protect doc access. Um, yeah, they, they, they gave you bad information. Like whoever taught that course needs to be retrained. You do not ever give you, because basically I can't let my underwriter see anything without it automatically being protected. Um, so if you have protect doc access role here, but it sounds like in your roles, you put protect doc access and you have underwriting here for personas and underwriting here for user group, right, Kayla? Yeah, so that's, that's bad because basically any document that the underwriter can see is automatically protected. And that's typically not how um, the best practice is for protected doc access. Love to talk more about it. You know, again, if it's working for you and your company, by all means, that's great. Um, it's just not a normal way to implement. Normally, um, you know, you want your underwriter to be able to see stuff without it automatically being protected. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry to scroll on that one. But that gives you a good example, right? The idea is that you can use user groups in, in ways within your roles. Last thing I want to say here on this is remember, roles are tied into milestone templates. So this goes back into if you've got a bunch of roles that you no longer need in your milestone template, just go remove them. Like, it's okay. They're gone. Now, if you have your loans on manual workflow, um, you know, obviously nothing's going to happen until you apply it on uh, this loan template. Uh, sorry, this milestone template to your loan file. <clears throat> if you have it on automatic, uh, next time, whatever triggers it will automatically update the roles. Keep in mind that if your milestone template changes roles, it goes back to the persona setting of, do you want to notify those people that their role has either been added or removed? Um, you have to make that decision in the persona level. So lots of things to consider um, when it comes to roles. What I found is a lot of folks are really not paying attention to this. And when you go into a file contact, that role list is like, yo big. And everybody's like, what are all this stuff? And they're like, I don't know. Just don't worry about it. So as an admin, you, you can actually clean that up if you want, right? Maybe you got other things to do, but it does help. Um, it does help significantly when you deal out down in business rules for the role access to document on here. Because um, as a reminder, every time you add a role in here, right, all of these are unchecked. Right. So anytime like here, one officer was created first, then these other roles were created. So that means that if one officer creates a document in an e-folder, um, you know, these folks won't be able to see it. Also, I don't know if everybody remembers this, but this is a setting that it got updated a while ago. Make sure you understand that um, if somebody has a persona or is part of a user group that's tied to the role, when they create that document, this behavior will be enforced because of that checkbox. If you don't want that to happen, meaning that if you, if Larry's not listed as a loan officer and Larry's not, name's not in there at all, but Larry creates a document. Remember, if this is unchecked, Larry's an other. If you check this box, if Larry has the process, uh, persona of loan officer, I'll be known as a loan officer role to the rule, even though, I, even though I'm not listed in the file. So if, you, if any of this is confusing, watch the replay. I go through all this stuff, by the way, in admin, in admin mastering and compass, like all these settings inside and out. Um, a lot of the stuff is just mistaught, truthfully. So Kayla, not to, I'm sure whoever taught you is perfectly fine, but they just told you wrong crap. They just taught you wrong. And Lord knows what else they're teaching everybody else. I wish they would um, have a, an open discussion about what's being taught. <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe one day. Um, Candace adds milestone roles will be one of my cleanup projects. Yay, Candace. Cool. Um, you gang, again, you guys are always super awesome for coming here and keeping me company. Any final questions before we break? It's getting close to the end of the month. It's a short month. Hopefully everybody's staying on the right side of zero when it comes to keeping the money that you're making. Um, Candace is still learning the settings. Candace, I'm always learning settings. The reason why I know a lot of this stuff is because I'm constantly churning back through what's going on. And that's honestly the reason why I do this um, walkthrough of the release notes. It's truthfully just so I know what the hell's going on. I read it out loud and hopefully it makes sense to you. 
So, Kat, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying warm up there in the north. Kayla, you're, you're so welcome. Guys, have a great rest of your day. It's 30 minutes. Time's up. We'll see you next week. Enjoy.